with this live feed. I'm going to see if I can fix it a little bit. It's a little bit overcast and cloudy here. So maybe that has something to do with it, brothers and sisters. But y'all bear with me. But again, if you can't get it here. You can get it on YouTube or you can call in and you can get it on the Bible radio show. So again, Revelations 8 and 13, the scripture shows that once Adam sinned, that marked the death of Jesus. The animal that coast of skin was made out of or animal sacrifice for sin was only a schoolmaster leading to Christ. Again, was only a schoolmaster leading to Christ. So let's look at the book of Revelations 8 and 13, the book of Revelations 8 and 13, and put some understanding to this. Because some people would say, well, God already knew that Adam was going to sin. God already knew that this was going to happen. Well, let's read this with understanding. Revelations 8 and 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through. Uh, let, me, let me make sure I got the right one. I want to make sure I got the right one. I don't think this is the right. I think it's, I'm sorry, Revelations 13. Let me make sure it's the right one. Revelations 13 and 8. I'm sorry, Revelations 13 and 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life. So if your name not written in the book of life, you're going to be worshiping Satan. Okay, whose name is not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. The foundation of the world was when man was created. And when man sinned, brothers and sisters, and that animal that was killed to put coats of skin on them represented the coming sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So when it said that the Lamb was slain from the foundation of the world, that's what it's talking about. Jesus knew that once man sinned, the man that he created, brothers and sisters, the man that he created, once his creation went south, he knew that he was going to have to come and correct it and come and fix it. So everything from the book of Genesis after Adam's sin on up to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ was just preparation. Everything that happened was preparation leading up to that point. We're talking about the real Father's Day. Now, let's go to the book of John. Let's go to the book of John and let's confirm this thing. Now, there's a confusion, brothers and sisters, even with those who are learned between God the Father and God the Son. There is no third person in the Godhead. We can't read that in the Bible. Where there are three that go by the title of God, but we can read in the Bible where there were two that went by the title of God. Now, Jesus is the God of the Old Testament. Our Lord, our Father, our King and Savior. All the prophets dealt with Jesus and his Godship before he came in the flesh. Let's take a look at a few scriptures that confirm this on our way to finding out when the real Father's Day will be. So let's go to the book of John, John chapter one. Now, the father does not deal with imperfection. He don't deal with this flesh and blood, brothers and sisters. That's the son's job. God, the son, he created us with permission from the father. And after his creation fell, he had to come and fix it himself. Let's confirm who made the man. John one and one through three. John one and one through three. And it reads, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. So we got two in the beginning, brothers and sisters. Now it says that the word was with God. But keep reading. And the word was God. So you got two people. Or I'm sorry, two beings here, brothers and sisters. That go by the title of God. I'm going to read that again. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Talking about the word. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. But now we get down into verse 10, brothers and sisters. He was in the world. 
talking about this God who went by the title Word, brothers and sisters, the Son. It says he was in the world and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. How crystal clear can you get than that? The one that came in the world also made the world. And at verse 3 it said all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So who is the creator brothers and sisters? And who did the creating? It was the son who today we know by the name of Jesus, brothers and sisters. So let's go ahead and continue. And we don't want to confuse the son with the father. So we're showing you the identity of both. Now let's go to the book of John, the sixth chapter. So Jesus, sent by the father, came himself to prepare us for the coming of the father, the real father's day. The son taught us the will of the father. And see, that's another thing. We know the identity of the father. We know where the father is. And we know about his love for us. But what is the father's will? That's the next thing we have to do to identify who we're talking about. John 6, brothers and sisters. John, the sixth chapter. And we're going to go 35 through 40. John 6, 35 through 40. Let us read. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. All, verse 37, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Jesus, what is the Father's will? Verse 39, John 6 and 39. And this is the Father's will which have sent me, that of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing, but shall raise it up again at the last day. So for those of you who are suffering because you lost a loved one, You've lost someone close to you due to gun violence or disease or natural causes, brothers and sisters. Jesus said it's the will of the father that all which he has given me, I should lose nothing, but shall raise it up again at the last day. So those loved ones of yours who have gone on and died, they are buried in the grave. Awaiting. Either. The return of Jesus or a thousand years after the return of Jesus. We're going to learn about that a little bit further in the lesson, brothers and sisters. That's called the first and the second resurrection. But he said it's the father's will. If you come to Jesus and you are accepted in the body of Christ and you at the best of your ability, try to try to um, keep his statutes, laws and commandments. And you should happen to die. Jesus hasn't lost you and you haven't lost him, brothers and sisters, because he said, I'm going to raise you up again at the last day. Let's read verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which sees the son and believes on him. Well, today, since he's not here in the physical form that he was 2000 years ago, how can you see him and believe on him, brothers and sisters? By believing the words that are in this book called the Bible. That's our version today of seeing the son and believing on him. And it says they may have everlasting life. So even if you die, he said, and I will raise him up at the last day. So, so stop saying that my loved ones are in heaven looking at me smiling because that's not biblical, brothers and sisters. Jesus just told you I'm going to raise him up again at the last day. And that is the coming of Christ, brothers and sisters. Let's read it again. We read it two times. Here's a third time. John 6 and 44. He said, no man can come to me except the father which has sent me draw him. So now the Lord is drawing you to the truth. You're starting to tune in on Tuesdays to really know what's in this book called the Bible, which is probably 
a little bit different from what you're hearing at some of the places that you go to and worship. I don't know whether that pertains to you or not, but I know it pertains to some people who are watching this show, brothers and sisters. But again, we are teaching Bible. Oh, I could talk to you 30 minutes about who I am and where I came from and the challenges I've had in my life and how good God is. That's a great motivational speech. That's a great life coaching lesson, brothers and sisters, but that's not teaching you what this word says. So again, when we go to our houses of worship, whichever day we go on, the correct day is Saturday, another lesson for another time, the Sabbath day. But even if you go on the first day of the week, brothers and sisters, Sunday, you should be learning what this book is saying because you're going to be judged by the things that are written in this book according to your works. So let's go ahead and continue, brothers and sisters, the real Father's Day. Let's go ahead and go to Revelations, the 20th chapter. Again, Revelations, the 20th chapter. Let's look at the series of events that have to take place before the Father can come to this earth. And we just mentioned some of them. There has to be a resurrection and a coming of the Messiah, brothers and sisters. Revelations 20, 1 through 15. We're going to take this whole chapter, brothers and sisters. Revelations 20. 1 through 15. Don't let nobody scare you from the book of Revelations, brothers and sisters. Again, don't let nobody scare you from the book of Revelations. Let's look at the order of things that have to take place before the Father can come down. And again, before the Father can come, sin has to be done away with. Flesh and blood has to be done away with. Satan has to be done away with. The false prophet, the Antichrist have to be done away with before the father when the father comes down there will be nothing left to do but reign because the son will have done it all let's go ahead and continue reading revelations 20 1 through 15 and i saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent why is he called the old serpent because the serpent or the snake was there in the book of Genesis, in the garden. And it's telling you who that snake and who that serpent was that was in the garden. It says, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. We're in the book of Revelations, the 20th chapter. That was verse 1 and 2. Let's go to 3. And cast him into a bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. What thousand years? The thousand year reign of Christ, brothers and sisters. So the thousand year reign of Christ, there will be no Satan during this thousand year millennium period. But then it goes on to say, and after that, after this thousand year period, brothers and sisters, he must be loosed a little season. Now, what's the wisdom behind God once he got Satan put away for a thousand years? What's the wisdom behind letting him back out for a little season? Well, I prayed on that, brothers and sisters, as I was growing and maturing in the knowledge of God. And then the knowledge came to me that if God has allowed Satan to tempt us for a thousand for six thousand years, if he has allowed Satan to tempt us for six thousand years, and there would be no Satan during this thousand years that he would be in a bottomless pit where Jesus has his reign, would it be fair for those people who were born and lived during the thousand year period to not be tempted? Like we've been tempted and tried for the past 6,000 years. So God said, even though I got Satan put away for a thousand years, after the thousand years, it said he must be a loose for a little season. And then at verse four, it says, and I saw thrones. So this is why Satan is put away. This is what's going to happen. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Christ and for the word of God. 
So this is talking about the matriarchs, brothers and sisters. All those people, those disciples and those matriarchs and, and those who tried to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and who were killed and beheaded and eaten by lions and tigers and, and put into the Roman games, brothers and sisters. He said, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. That's one group. But there's another group who will be here at the time of the coming of Christ. And let's talk about those people. We're in the middle of Revelation 20 and 4. It says, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. So this is yet future, brothers and sisters. So there's a group that have already died. And then there's a future group both mentioned in Revelation 20 and 4. And what did it say the reward would be for both of these groups of people? It says, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years, brothers and sisters. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead, Revelations 20 and 5, live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Everybody that has died would not be resurrected when Jesus comes back. He told you that right here. He said, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. The first resurrection is set aside for a specific group of people. Not good people, brothers and sisters. Not just good people. Oh yeah, mama was a good person. She fed the hungry. She clothed the poor. She went to church. Grandmama was a good person. But being good don't qualify you to make it in the first resurrection. You would have had to keep the statues, laws, and the commandments of God. Just think of how many of our grandmothers didn't even know that the Sabbath day was on Saturday but went to church Sunday every week. Just think of how many of our grandparents didn't know that pork was not permissible to eat according to the book of Leviticus, the 11th chapter. Just think of how many of our grandparents didn't know that the Lord had holy days that we were supposed to keep in the book of Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Just think of how many of our grandparents celebrated Christmas, celebrated Easter, celebrated Halloween and all of these pagan festivals that the Lord commanded us not to celebrate. They were good people, brothers and sisters, but many of them didn't know enough about the laws of this book to keep the laws of this book. So what's going to happen to them? They'll be resurrected, brothers and sisters, but they just won't be in the first resurrection. The first resurrection is reserved for those who died in Christ, which means that they kept his statutes, laws, and his commandments. I know that's a difficult thing to hear, brothers and sisters, but it is truth. But again, there's hope because they will be resurrected and they just have to wait a thousand years later. Now it says at verse 6, Revelation 20 and 6, Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power. Well, why don't the second death have no power? Because you die the first time physically. The second time you die, you get put in what's called the lake of fire. That's the spiritual death. But it says that if you come up in the first resurrection, the second death have no power because there's no judgment in the first resurrection. You passed the test already while you were living in your flesh and blood body. So there would be no need for you to be judged because there is no judgment in the first resurrection. But of those that would be resurrected in the first resurrection, it says of them at verse 6, middle of first, verse 6, Revelations 26. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, just like he prophesied. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. Didn't we just talk about Satan being released to try to deceive those who have been around and not know him? We know of Satan. 
He has deceived us every day. But what about these people during a thousand year period when there would be no Satan for a thousand years? They got to be tempted too, brothers and sisters. Verse 10. And the devil that deceived was cast. I'm sorry. Let me let me let me go back up. I'm sorry. It says uh, Revelation 20 and 8. And shall go out and deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. The number of whom is as the sands of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So although he's going to be loose for a little season, he's only being loose, brothers and sisters, to tempt those who were here during that thousand year period. And shortly after, he will be destroyed. And it says, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. A lot of people teach, oh, the Lord ain't that cruel where he's going to torment people day and night. Aren't we reading what the book is saying? So you don't want to find yourself in the lake of fire, brothers and sisters with Satan and the false beast and be tormented day and night forever and forever. Now, let's talk about the preparing for the coming of the Father. Revelations 20 and 11. We got one more resurrection, brothers and sisters. We got one more resurrection that's taking place. A thousand years after the coming of Christ, after Satan being loose for a little season, brothers and sisters, here we go, the rest of the dead. Here we go. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no more place for them. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open, which is the 66 books of the Bible. And another book was open, which is the book of life which is in heaven, brothers and sisters, that book is recording everything you do while you're here on this earth. It's being put in the book of life. So you got the Bible, 66 books, and then you got the book of life, right? It said, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. Talking about the 66 books of the Bible. 